Freedom, an academy games game about the Underground Railroad. Yes, this is a cooperative game where the AI will control the slave catchers and the forces that are trying to keep slavery alive in 19th century America and the players will uh, control the forces that are trying well, to do the opposite. They are trying to help slaves to escape from the plantations in the south to Canada and also at the same time they are trying to raise enough political support and to create an economic engine that will be strong enough and will have enough effect on society to actually abolish slavery. Okay, uh, let's talk about the game itself now. It comes with this beautiful, ah, oh, so beautiful mounted board. Very long, in fact I cannot even picture it all in, in the frame of, of the image. Several sections here a map with a net of locations and connections that the players will use to move slaves towards Canada and to help them escape from the US. Slaves that make it to Canada will be placed in that area there. Slaves that are captured are returned to the slave market, which is represented by these cards here. At the end of each turn, the slaves on the bottom card in this section will be placed in the plantations in the south. And then the other cards are slided down, a new card is revealed and new blocks representing slaves are placed on the new card. The deck of cards that fill up the slavery market also works as a countdown clock and tells you the number of turns that the game will continue. If slaves are caught on their way to Canada and they're placed back in there and cannot be placed back in the plantations, there, is too, there are too many slaves there already, those slaves, those cubes of pending slaves are placed on that display there which tells you about victory conditions and defeat conditions. This is a card that we will place there. There are several that you use and the one that you use depends on the number of players that you have. You place the slaves that are lost there if you ever have this display full of cubes of pending slaves and you need to add another one you lose the game. Also, this display tells you the number of slaves that you need to free to uh, meet one of the two victory conditions. And for each uh, such card, you have two levels, the basic one and the hard one. To win the hard one, you need to free more slaves to send more slaves to Canada. That is, that is only one of the two things that you need to fulfill to win the game. The other thing is to build enough uh, political support for well, the cause against slavery. In order to do so, you need to purchase all of the support tokens that are placed on the board there and that are very expensive. During the game, players will spend money and earn money and reinvest money. And well, this is a very important part of the game. And here we have an area with tokens the players purchase or otherwise acquire during the game and they use them to perform actions. Here there are cards that will be placed in this section here. The cards also can be purchased for the price indicated there. And most of these cards are good things. You want to purchase them because you want the advantages depicted on the card. Some cards are negative, so you wonder, well, why would I ever buy those? Why do you need to buy them? They just happen. Because at the end of each turn, the rightmost card in this section here is removed. Maybe other cards have been removed too because they've been purchased during the turn. The remaining cards are slided down and the track is filled up with new cards from in, coming from the appropriate deck. There are three decks, each corresponds to a different period. When you purchase all of the support tokens for a period, you move to the next period. And again, you need to purchase all of the support tokens that are there to win the game. Those are two conditions, support tokens and uh, a minimum amount of slaves freed during the game. How you lose the game? Well, if the game ends and you haven't met your victory conditions, you lose the game. Also, if the slaves lost the track that I showed you earlier is filled up and you need to place more slaves there, you also lose the game. Now, here we have the net of connections that I showed you earlier. The slaves are going to move on that, through that 
to, to go to Canada, but there are people that don't want them to do so. Those tokens there with those color symbols represent slave catchers. At the beginning of each turn, uh, you roll to see which of these slave catchers move. This is a random movement. There are two dice, one indicates the slave catcher that moves and the other one the direction, for example. Now the yellow slave catcher moves by one space in the white direction. The white and black arrows are come horror style that indicate movement, for example, uh, for the yellow slave catcher moving by one in the white direction means to move there. Each slave catcher has, as you can see, a track, a color track that corresponds to that track and the slate catcher moves back and forth on the track of the corresponding color. After that you have the planning phase during which the players will acquire tokens. Each player can purchase up to two tokens from this area. Uh, you can purchase support tokens which are very expensive and don't really help you. Well, they, they help you to go to the next period but they don't have any other direct effect, still you need to buy them. You have conductor tokens that are used to move slaves and they're used to move the corresponding number of slaves by the corresponding number of spaces. This token moves three slaves by one space, this other one four slaves by one space, two slaves by two spaces and so on and so forth. And you have fundraising tokens. Um, for example, this one earns you money for each slave that is in a green plantation area. So, for example, if there are slaves placed like that in those green plantation areas, I spend this fundraising token and each of those slaves will generate money for me. Players also generate money by moving slaves into cities or in his areas that have that symbol and then the player that does that earns the corresponding amount of money. So players uh, in the playing phase will purchase the tokens that I showed you and then you have the action phase during which they use those tokens. So players in that phase uh, spend their conductor tokens to move the slaves. Each slave can be moved only once by a conductor token but during a turn you can spend multiple conductor tokens on the same slave cube and that slave cube can be moved once per conductor token. However, when a slave lands in an area that is connected to the color track of a slate catcher, the corresponding slate catcher will move by one space towards the slave. So if the slate cube moves here, then the slate catcher moves there. If we have this cube moving there, then the slate catcher moves there. So you kind of need to be careful because these guys keep moving around. And there are times in which if you move a slave in a certain location, that slave will automatically be caught. Sometimes you will need to sacrifice a slave to distract a slave catcher and so that other people can make it to the north. Sometimes you can manipulate the slave catchers, make them run back and forth as people sneak past them. Another thing that can help you with this is the special abilities of the players. Each player uh, is represented by a character in the game. Uh, here I'm just showing you two. And each character has special abilities. Actually, each character has two types of abilities. One is a permanent ability that can be used multiple times in the game. And one is a one-time ability that is used once per game. Once you use it, you flip the card that disappears and you still have your permanent ability. For example, uh, the station master has the ability to move one slate catcher one less space during an action phase. That can be particularly good. The one time ability is to uh, is that conductor tokens don't move any of the slate catchers during other players action phase. The slate catchers are just there and they don't know what's happening. So one of the things that you can do is to move slaves, earn money, move the slave catchers, so sometimes the slaves get caught. Another thing that you can do is to purchase and use these cards here. One such card can be purchased per player per turn. 
you can spend your fundraising tokens to raise money and yes you can use the ability of your uh, of your character so those are the actions you can perform you can perform them in any order you want and some actions can be performed multiple times for example you can spend you can use multiple conductor tokens during the same turn you can also choose to skip your action phase entirely you do not do anything in that case you simply um, receive money from the bank in case you're low on cash and there isn't much you can do that's an option that you can decide to use after all players have taken their action phase then you go to the slave market phase in which um, well what I described before takes place and that is when uh, slaves come out of the slave market and are added to the plantations in the south Hopefully you will have been able to push out enough slaves on the plantations that there are enough empty slots from the new slaves to get there uh, because again if the area here is filled up and uh, you still have slaves to place they go on the other track, the slaves lost track and that is bad for you. And this is it. This is really most of the game. There probably are one or two more things but Trust me, the general idea is what I just described to you. This is a solid game. Not only is it a game with an incredibly relevant topic, a topic that we should never forget about, a topic that we will never know enough about it. The more we know about it, the better. Not only all of these things, this is also a fun game. It is also a particularly tough game, at least I haven't figured out a way of winning the game yet. I've been trounced pretty badly every time I play it. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong but um, or I'm just not particularly smart maybe you have figured out an algorithm that allows you to win the game then I can easily see how you can change the level of difficulty simply by increasing the number of slaves by reducing the number of conductor tokens available they're just endless ways that you can use to make the game as mean to you as you want as is it is mean enough for me I've had a hard time uh, winning the game so much so that I have never won the game the game works well as a, as a multiplayer uh, definitely when I played it in multiplayer, which wasn't often, uh, there was a lot of interaction. Yes, debating things was important. In my group we never had the alpha player problem that sometimes you have in cop co games. But since there is no hidden information, I see how in some groups that may happen. If you have somebody who is annoying and bossy and likes to tell new players what to do, that player may try to take control of the game. That is a possibility. Um, spike his drink, put something in his drink so that he will be less active. I don't know, you figure out how to deal with that. Um, the game also works very well as a solitaire game. Actually, I play the game mainly as a solitaire game. These days, I should say these nights, my youngest daughter hasn't been feeling very well. Um, well, and I've been playing the game in, in, in the free time between one intervention and the other, between doing one thing for her and changing a diaper and working with her. Oh, whatever, whatever, I'm just now talking about personal biography, let's uh, go back to the game or let's connect biography with the game. If you are that like me or if you have a busy schedule, you cannot always play with other games, it is great to have a game such as this one that gives you the option of playing the game as a straighter game and it works, it is fun, it is challenging, I didn't find that anything of the of the experience was lost, which is not what happens with all cooperative games. Some multiplayer cop do not double well as solitaire games. This one does, which is a plus. Relevant topic, beautiful components, solid mechanics challenge to play and and really entertaining flexible system that gives you a lot of choices and a lot of challenges personally if i were to think of the ideal cop game it would sound a lot like the description just that i just gave you and that description just so happens to perfectly fit freedom the underground railroad high praise from from me for this game high recommendation really I like this game, a light opportunity gives me to explore this aspect of history, it is a beautiful game, it is a good game, I don't know that I can recommend it highly enough.